Hello and welcome to another painting video. In this video I'll be painting a Death Guard Praetor for my new Horus Heresy army. In my previous video I showed you how I painted a standard Death Guard Space Marine. These steps will be shown here as well, but I will paint some new stuff as well. I also decided to add some minor conversions to the model. Let me show you how I did that. Because my Death Guard will mainly use Mark III armor, the new Praetor from the Age of Darkness box will look a little bit weird amongst his soldiers. He's very elaborate and it's clearly Mark VI. With some minor conversions, I'm going to try to make his armor look more like a Artificer Mark III armor. <laughs> My first idea was to use this printed Mark III head. I trimmed away the neck guard to accommodate the helmet, but later on I ran into problems with the helmet. The plumage was too big and the helmet would be protruding too much from the body. I went with a different helmet that I will show you at the end. The shoulder pads are very telling for which mark of armor the Marine is using. I got a Mark III shoulder pad from the vehicle sprue of the Spartan Land Raider. Another shoulder pad I printed. I like it when both shoulder pads are different. Makes it more visually interesting. Now I have to make sure that the cape will fit over the new shoulder pads. Some parts are molded in the cape of the original shoulder pads, but I cut this away and sand it down. The cape is not very flush on the shoulder pad as you can see here. That is why I make a small blob of green stuff in order to connect the cape with the shoulder pad. Once it's painted, you won't be able to see this anyway. On to the base. These Space Marine casualties are for a different project. I'll get to those later. I've already printed several bits to be used on bases. I want my Death Guard to fight in an urban environment. First, I heighten the base with some cork. I like my leaders and sergeants to be slightly elevated than the normal troopers. I break off a piece of cork and glue it on the base. I then cut and pull away small pieces of cork to make it more natural looking. The Praetor will be standing neatly on this tactical rock. After adding another bit of debris, I get my texture paste and fill in the edges and other spots to blend the cork base and make it more like muddy rubble. Death Guard have a unique armory and leaders are able to use War Scythe. I did buy the four drilled scythe but I ended up printing one because the blade was bigger and much more impressive. It took a couple of tries to print the correct size so the hands on the weapon aligned with the arms on the model. And here is a finished Praetor. I found the perfect helmet, which I believe is a Mark IV, but it looks more like a fancy gas mask. Perfect for the Death Guard. Next up is painting. Now, most things I'm showing here are straight from my Death Guard Space Marine video. A link is in the upper right corner. But I'll go over it really fast. 
I'm trying to incorporate airbrushing a little bit more and slowly but surely I'm getting more proficient. I do have some trouble mixing the paints for the airbrush so that they flow nicely and don't get too watery. I should have had my shoulder pads and cape separate for painting but I was too eager to build the model. I taped off all the white armor in order to airbrush the pads and the outside of the cape. Trying to highlight the cape with the airbrush was a first for me, but I think it worked rather well. I made sure I had a little bit lower pressure on the compressor and I stayed close with the model. I painted an additional highlight with my brush to make the cape pop a little bit more. Then I shaded the green, making it nice and dirty for my death guard. Now it's on to painting all the steps, just like I did with my other death guard space marines. First I paint the white armor, shading it, bringing back the original screaming skull, and using a panel liner to darken the shading even more. Next come all the details, painting the metal and brass, and painting all the black hoses and details. I decided to paint the half of my scythe black as well. Now the Praetor is almost ready for transfers and weathering. He has however a very fancy holster and some leather straps. Let's paint those first. First I base coat all the leather with Dryad Bark. I layer and highlight the leather with Gorthor Brown. Then I add a final highlight with Karak Stone. Finally I shade the entire holster with Agrax Earth Shade to darken and blend the colors. On to my favorite part of painting these Death Guard Marines, the weathering. Again I follow the steps I outlined in my previous video. Because of all the trimming it was quite difficult to sponge the white armor with Rhinox hide. I ended up doing a lot with an old brush for those hard to reach places. I am a fan of the dirty down rust effect. It looks great and it's easy to apply and handle. As it reacts with water you can later use a damp brush to either fix the rust or remove it where needed. And of course Streak and Grime, another great tool for weathering. I'm a bit more selective with these models where I add the Streak and Grime. In the past I usually cover an entire model and remove most of it. A bit wasteful and not really necessary really. The makeup sponges are really helpful as they don't fray like a normal q-tip. The finishing touch is putting some screaming skull back on the armor. This will bring back some highlights and break up the weathering a little bit. It's so easy to overdo it. Finding a right balance of weathering is rather difficult. For the base I'm using one of the new contrast paints. This is sprayed with an airbrush. Because this is a contrast paint it already flows really nicely and if you hit the boots and the cape of the Praetor it will blend the model in with the scenery on the base, making it look like he's wading through mud. Be sure when dry brushing in the next few steps 
to also hit the boots and the cape so they get some selective highlights. If not, they'll drown in a sea of brown and the model will pop a lot less. And here we have a finished Praetor, ready to lead his army from the front. The format of this video was a little bit different, because literally going step by step again would be a waste, as I've already done this in a comprehensive video of my Death Guard Marines. What do you think of this format? Let me know in the comments. In my next video, I will tackle another Horus Heresy unit, the Contemptor Dreadnought. In the meantime, be sure to check out my Instagram, where I post pictures of current projects and behind the scenes stuff. But for now, thanks for watching.